Welcome to this video. Today I want to show you how to debug Samad Meco microcontrollers by using this cheap JTAG Eyes debugger. So here you can see my test setup for this. Here I have an Atmega 32A microcontroller and a small LED bar connected to it because I will write a small program which will use this LED bar here. And here is another JTAG IS debugger connected to this microcontroller. But I already told you the problem is you can't debug every Atmega microcontroller with this debugger. There are just some available. So let me show you some microcontrollers which support JTAG debugging. Therefore here I am at the official microchip um, web page and you can see here is the Atmega 32A microcontroller which I will use in today's video. And you can see here it comes with a JTAG interface for OM chip debugging. So this microcontroller can be debugged with the JTAG ICE debugger. And another quite important or quite good microcontroller you can debug with this is the Mega 32 u 4 microcontroller. This microcontroller comes with a JTAG interface for on-chip debugging and it also features a USB 2.0 full speed low speed device. And maybe I will use this microcontroller for my USB tutorials. But I already said not every AppMaker microcontroller is compatible with, with this debugger. Here we have the AppMaker 48 and here we can find a JTAG interface so, so you can not debug it with this debugger. Okay, so now let's briefly talk about the connections because you can see here I have connected some pins of my microcontroller to this adapter here. So the adapter has this 10 pin header built into it and here it's a little bit hard to read but here is the pin out printed on this um, yeah on this device and here on this web page which I'll put a link into the description you can see the connections so here on the right we have our debugger and here we have our A4R microcontroller so you can see the debugger comes with 5 volt and a ground pin and then we need these four pins here and we have connected them to the Atmega microcontroller. The microcontroller will have some pins with the same names here so you know what to connect. Okay, so the connections are clear now. Let's talk about the software we are going to need. So we will need the A4R dude to program the device and to set some fuses. We will need the A4R GNU debugger, so A4R GDB. And these two packages can be installed over your package manager. So the for example on R you have to run pacman minus s um, a4r dude and a4r gdb to install them. And then we need the a avarize tool to um, yeah to get a debug server running to which we can connect over a4r gdb. And this is not available in the repositories, so let me briefly show you how to build it. So here is the GitHub page of the A4RIS program. Or I think this is an old build, maybe. So yeah, it's quite old, but it should work. It should still work. And let me get this link here and let's cd into my temp folder. And let me clone the repository and cd into it. And now to build it, first we have to run this bootstrap file, um, script here, which will check for some dependencies and create some files automatically. Okay, so now let's create a build folder and let's cd into it. And now let's run configure here. And now we can build it, so we'll just use make and I want to use four threads to build it, to speed it up a little bit. Okay, now we have built it and if you want to install it, I would have to call make install, but as I already have installed it on my PC, I won't do this now. Okay, so much for the software. But if you want to use on-chip debugging, we have to set some fuse options. 
So here I have a small fuse calculator and let's select the Atmega Mega 32A device here, which I will be using. And here we can see all the fuse settings. And you can see here on chip debug enabled is disabled by default. And we need this to debug our program over JTAG. So let's tick this on and we have all also to check if JTAG interface enabled is on too. And we see this just applies for the high fuse. So let me grab this command here. And now we can use a 4 audio to fuse our device. Okay, so I will run a 4 audio The program I want to use is called JTAG1. Then the port to this device is, um, in my case, dev TTY USB 0, because there is a USB to serial adapter built into this JTAG ICE um, controller. The core is, or the microcontroller is uh, M32, so it had Mega32, and I want to write this fuse value here. So let me do this. I have to give it my password here. Okay, I got an error here because reading didn't work yet, but this is okay because this will work after we have set the bit, the fuse bit here. Okay, and now let's take a look at the sample program I will use here. Okay, so here we are. The file is called blink.c. And this is a very simple program. I'm using all the pins of port A as outputs. And then I will, um, yeah, I will turn on all the lights of this LED bar in a loop and then I will turn them off again. So we can see the LED bar going up and down, up and down. Okay, and to program this by using our debugger, we need a 4 audio once again, but this time we want to write to the flash and we want to write blink.elf. So let's do this. Okay, and now we can see here, this is going up and down. And now our next goal is to debug this program here. So therefore, I will just call a for all rise. We need to pass the JTAG option here to tell the device which um, device file to use. And I will use TTY USB 0 once again. Maybe let's do a clear first. Avarize JTAG is dev USB 0. And I want to create a new debug port on my local host in port 4242. So let's run this. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, it's TTY USB 0. So, and you can see now the program is stopped and it's waiting for a debug connection on port 424. So let me open up a second window here and let's see the into my source folder. Okay, so here we are again. And now I will call A4R GDB, so the GNU debugger for A4R. And I want to use the file blink.elf here. And now I am connected. No, 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 I've just started the debugger. Now I need to connect. I can do this with target, remote, localhost, and then I have to specify the port. And you can see here, we got a message here, connected. Our connection opened by localhost and now we are here in the vectors. So let me list the lines at line 20 of my file here. So here we have the endless loop and now let's create a breakpoint here at line 21. So let's do this and if you want to start the program I just have to type continue or C. Now we can see this thing goes up now we're at the breakpoint and if we continue once again, you can see, yeah, it's the bar is being reduced now. If we want to print something, for example, if you're interested in the current value of port A, we can run print port A and we see the current value of port A. Or if we want to see the current value of our um, variable i, I can use print i and now I see, okay, the current state here is 2 
And maybe as a last thing, let's add a conditional breakpoint. So here we have um, nine iterations from zero to eight. And now let's say we only want to break the program if the i variable is equal to eight. So we can do this with condition breakpoint one and the condition is i is equal to eight. Okay, so let's continue the program once again. And you can see the bar is now getting smaller once again. And now we, are, we have hit the breakpoint and we can continue or continue debugging. Okay, great. So that's how to debug with this JTAG ICE adapter, which you can get for about 10 euros on eBay. Um, so I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. Thanks for watching and goodbye.